Hey, welcome to the shop. So I'm TIG welding some aluminum today and I'm going to use a thermal imaging camera to capture the way that the heat travels through the aluminum as I weld. It's important to understand how heat flows through your material as you run along the length of a joint. To be able to adjust things like travel speed and amperage, let's go ahead and dive in and see what we can learn from this little experiment. I'm tacking together some three millimeter, one eighth inch thick aluminum coupons and I'm just putting a small tack at each corner. This is usually how I put together practice material like this. The pulse is just because I forgot and left the pulse on from a previous job, but I'll turn that off before we run the actual weld joins. Now with this tacked up, let's take a look at the thermal imaging camera I'm going to use. It's this Top Don TC002 that they sent out to be able to use for this experiment and it's been really cool to play with. You can see with my hand on the table, it shows where the material has heated up from it, so it's pretty sensitive. I'm also setting up to take a number of camera views. In addition to the thermal imager, I'll look at the amperage on the machine so you can see where my foot pedal's at and the weld, and of course I've got to hunt around for the thing I had two minutes ago, but uh, we'll find it. Rather than just cruising right through this, let's break it down into sections and see what we can learn. See, every weld joint is like a good story. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you handle each of them a little bit differently. Let's start off by looking at the start. The beginning of any aluminum TIG weld is really important because it sets the pace for the whole length of the joint. There's often a tendency to want to get going right away, but notice I haven't added any filler. I'm just sitting there for really three or four seconds. It feels like a long time before things start to warm up. Let me show you. So I'm waiting for that pool to form and the material to flow down in the corner of the joint before I add any filler metal. So just be patient and let that heat soak in. Let's take a look at the thermal image of this and you can see how much the material heats out and how far that heat spreads before I've moved at all, before I even add a single dab of filler metal. It's pretty neat to see that. Once a few dabs of filler have been added, it's time to run the middle of the joint and you can just cruise right along here. Let's take a look at the heat flow in this section. At this point, I'm just moving and dabbing, trying to keep that puddle flowing down into the bottom of the joint and adding a dab of filler every eighth inch or so. So now that I'm in the middle of my run, that red circle is the hottest point and that's right around where the torch is. You can see where it goes from orange to blue and that advances about the same speed that the torch is, so I'm in a pretty steady state. For the last inch or inch and a half of a weld joint, it becomes really important to pay attention to your heat. Let's take a look at what happens there. At this point, that frontier is reaching the end of the plate and starting to soak outwards and the temperature ahead of my weld joint is increasing. So I need to compensate for this by either speeding up or reducing amperage. You'll see the amperage fall off as I let my pedal down. Let me show you what this looks like when welding. So here at the end, I've dropped my amperage quite a bit and I actually pulse manually with the pedal to get the last few dabs in. So I'll come down and I've dropped my amperage and I'll give it a little pulse, another one, and one more to finish it off. Now even with this care, I did nip the edges a little bit, but I think you get the point. I thought it was really cool to be able to visualize the temperature of the plate and the heat flow through it, something that you become familiar with as you weld, but to actually be able to see it was really cool. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty curious to know how does this compare to running a weld on steel? Let's go ahead and run a quick joint on a couple of 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter thick steel coupons and see how that looks. For the steel experiment, we'll just take a look at the thermal image throughout the entire length. As I tack it up, notice that the heat remains concentrated right there towards the end. It doesn't soak out as much, so there's definitely a difference. I'm going to dive right into the run on this and the first thing I'll point out is how quickly I'm able to form a pool and start to weld. Not only is it unnecessary to wait for the cleaning that occurs with the AC arc on aluminum, I, I don't need that on the steel, it also just heats up and forms a puddle a lot faster. So I'm already dabbing and moving and I'm about you know an inch into the joint at this point already. Here towards the middle of the joint I can just cruise along. You'll notice I'm using my thumb to feed some filler wire into the joint because I'm using a pretty small diameter wire which gives some nice control on steel. I, I usually like to use a smaller diameter wire. Nope, I just dipped my tungsten there. I'll just proceed in the name of science and there's not a whole lot to see so let's jump ahead to the end. 
because steel doesn't conduct the heat out as much as the aluminum did, I'm getting a lot closer to the edge of the joint before the whole thing is soaked with heat and I have to pay a lot of attention to reduce my amperage. The principle is still the same, but it's not quite as pronounced here on steel. Hey, well, thanks a ton for tuning in today. I always appreciate it. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leaving me a comment. And be sure to check the description for some links to things that could be helpful for you. We'll see you next time.